Why don't celebrating Valentine's Day in Islam part 3. Why don't Muslims celebrate Valentine's Day? Short answer, if you look into history and origins of Valentine's Day, plus the values this celebration promotes today, the answer to your question will be very clear. Muslims don't blindly follow the crowd when it comes to celebrations of any kind. Islam promotes love among people and the exchange of gifts is one way for love and good relations to increase in society but does not restrict the expression of this brotherly, sisterly, martial or familial love to just one day a year. Salam, peace, Tanisha. Thank you for sending in your question to our website. Islam is a way of life that encompasses and engulfs a Muslim's complete life and self. From the faith and belief that reside in their hearts, to their thoughts, to their outward actions that are visible to others, all are affected by and based on the guidelines of Islam. No Contradictions It is very important in Islam for a believer to ensure that there is no contradiction between their outward actions and their innate beliefs and faith. Therefore, whether a Muslim is alone or in the public eye, they strive to unequivocally obey their Lord, Allah, by following his messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, at all times. Islam is not merely a set of physical worship rituals, though these are important in their own right. It is also a set of guidelines, responsibilities towards others, and rights, which impacts a Muslim's social customs, interactions, and obligations. The word, Muslim, means, the one who submits, to God, hence. He or she gives preference to the unquestioning obedience and acquiescence to the commands of Allah sent to his messenger over and above the approval of Allah's creation. And even above his or her own personal desires. Allah has commanded Muslims to remain united, keep close community bonds with each other to form a strong, global brotherhood, and to not follow the ways of the disbelievers. Hence, the conscientious Muslim is not a slave to passing trends and customs that have no basis in Islam. Don't follow the crowd. Keeping all of the above in mind, it becomes clear that a Muslim does not follow the crowd when it comes to celebrations of any kind. He or she follows the Quran and the Sunnah, way, of Prophet Muhammad. Instead of thinking, win it? What's the harm, before following the crowd and their seasonal whims, a Muslim thinks should I? Will Allah be pleased with this? The Prophet said. Whoever imitates a people is one of them. Abu Dawud. Consequently, Muslims do not celebrate any days, festivals, or seasonal celebrations that were not celebrated by the Prophet and his companions. Valentine in History and Today Furthermore, Valentine's Day is a celebration that has no basis in anything worthwhile or noble. Its origin lies in Roman history, purportedly connected to a saint called Valentine, who was sentenced to death on February 14, 270 CE. It began as a pagan ritual started by Romans in the 4th century BC to honor their false god Lepercus. The main attraction of this ritual was a lottery held to distribute young women to young men for entertainment and pleasure, until the next year's lottery. Romans continued to celebrate this until after they became Christians. Source, Islam Web In this way, Valentine's Day promotes adultery and promiscuous relationships, which undermine and jeopardize the sanctity of marriage and the stability of the family unit. It leads to unnecessary expenditure, and promotes fornication, drinking, and immorality. Lastly, this day compounds a sense of deprivation, loneliness, and low self-worth among those people who are single. Islam prohibits dating and sex outside marriage, both of which Valentine's Day encourages. It is obvious, then, that a Muslim should not celebrate it. Love in Islam On the other hand, Islam encourages strong bonds of love, community, and brotherhood and sisterhood among Muslims, and families, and does not restrict the expression of this brotherly, sisterly, partial, or familial love to just one day a year. Giving gifts has also been encouraged in Islam, and once again, not restricted to just one day. Any wise person, even a non-Muslim, who has witnessed life and its trials, will willingly and objectively attest to the absolute absurdity and superficial, flimsy foundation of Valentine's Day. Businesses, on the other hand, capitalize on this day to earn as much revenue as possible by offering customized products and services, hence the hoopla around it. If we take the commercial aspect of Valentine's Day out of the picture, this so-called festival does not have a single leg to stand on. I hope this answers your question, Tanisha. Salam and please stay in touch. Valentine's Day is a Jahili Roman festival. 
Valentine's Day is a Jahili Roman festival, which continued to be celebrated until after the Romans became Christian. This festival became connected with the saint known as Valentine who was sentenced to death on February 14, 270 CE. The Kufar still celebrate this festival, during which immorality and evil are practiced widely. Can anyone believe that a Muslim can celebrate any festival of the Kufar and involve in it? Question, if a girl loves a boy from afar, has she committed a sin? Answer, praise be to Allah. Islam came to close the doors that lead to evil and sin, and is keen to block all the means that may lead to corruption of hearts and minds. Love and infatuation between the sexes are among the worst of problems. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Majmu al-Fatawa, 10129. Love is a psychological sickness, and if it grows strong it affects the body, and becomes a physical sickness, either as diseases of the brain, which are said to be diseases caused by waswas. Or diseases of the body such as weakness, emaciation and so on. End quote. And he, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Majmu al-Fatawa, 10132. Loving a non-Maram woman leads to many negative consequences, the full extent of which is known only to the Lord of people. It is a sickness that affects the religious commitment of the sufferer, then it may also affect his mind and body. End quote. It is sufficient to note that one of the effects of love of a member of the opposite sex is enslavement of the heart which is held captive to the loved one. So love is a door that leads to humiliation and servility. That is sufficient to put one off this sickness. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Majmu al-Fatawa, 10185. If a man is in love with a woman, even if she is permissible for him, his heart remains enslaved to her, and she can control him as she wishes, even though outwardly he appears to be her master. Because he is her husband, but in fact he is her prisoner and slave, especially if she is aware of his need and love for her. In that case, she will control him like a harsh and oppressive master controls his abject slave who cannot free himself from him. Rather he is worse off than that, because enslavement of the heart is worse than enslavement of the body. End quote. Attachment to the opposite sex will not happen to a heart that is filled with love of Allah. It only affects a heart that is empty and weak, so it is able to gain control of it, then when it becomes strong and powerful it is able to defeat the love of Allah and lead the person into shirk. Hence it is said, love is the action of an empty heart. If the heart is devoid of the love and remembrance of the Most Merciful, and is a stranger to speaking to him, it will be filled with love of women, images, and listening to music. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Majmu al-Fatawa, 10135. If the heart loves Allah alone and is sincerely devoted to him, it will not even think of loving anyone else in the first place, let alone falling in love. When a heart falls in love, that is due to the lack of love for Allah alone. Hence because Yusuf loved Allah and was sincerely devoted to him, he did not fall into the trap of love, rather Allah says, interpretation of the meaning. Thus it was, that we might turn away from him evil and illegal sexual intercourse. Surely, he was one of our chosen, guided, slaves, Yusuf 1224. The wife of the minister tried cunningly and by the use of a trick to get Joseph, peace be upon him, to commit an indecent act. She shut the doors to ensure that they were alone and she said to him, Come towards me. Joseph said, I seek protection in Allah from what you are calling me toward. My master has taken good care of me in my stay here and I will never betray him. If I betray him, I will be a wrongdoer, and those who do wrong do not succeed. She had desired to commit the indecent act and the same thought would have crossed his mind had he not seen Allah's signs that prevented him and distanced him from that. I showed him my proofs to keep him pure from evil and distance him from unlawful sexual relations and betrayal. Joseph was one of my servants whom I chose for messengership and prophethood. They raced for the door, Joseph to save himself, and she to prevent him from leaving. She caught hold of his shirt to stop him from leaving and she tore it from behind. At the door they found her husband. The minister's wife deceptively said to him. The punishment for the person who intended to commit an indecent act with your wife, O minister, can only be prison or that he be given a painful punishment. Joseph, peace be upon him, said, it was she who tried to get me to commit an indecent act. I did not intend it from her. Allah then made a child from her family speak in the cradle and it testified saying. 
If Joseph's shirt is torn from the front, then it indicates that she is truthful, because she was trying to stop him from coming on to her, and then he will be eyeing. But if his shirt is torn from behind, then that is an indication that he is truthful, because she was trying to seduce him whilst he was running away, and she will be eyeing. When the minister saw that Joseph's shirt was torn from behind, he realized that Joseph was telling the truth and he said, This accusation that you cast on him is part of your trickery, O women. Your trickery is certainly strong. He said to Joseph, O Joseph, completely ignore this and do not mention it to anyone. And you, woman, ask forgiveness for your sin, for you committed a sin by trying to seduce Joseph. Yusuf 23-29 as for the wife of Alizis, she was a mushrik as were her people, hence she fell into this trap. End quote. The Muslim must save himself from this fate and not fall short in guarding against it and ridding himself of it. If he falls short in that regard and follows the path of love, by continuing to steal harem glances or listening to harem things, and being careless in the way he speaks to the opposite sex, etc. Then he is affected by love as a result, then he is sinning and will be subject to punishment for his actions. How many people have been careless at the beginning of this problem, and thought that they were able to rid themselves of it whenever they wanted? Or that they could stop at a certain limit and not go any further, until the sickness took a strong hold and no doctor or remedy could help? Ibn al Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Radat al Muhibin, 147. If the cause happens by his choice, he has no excuse for the consequences that are beyond his control, but if the reason is harem, the drunkard had no excuse. Undoubtedly following one glance with another and allowing oneself to keep thinking about the person is like drinking intoxicants, he is to be blamed for the cause. End quote. If a person strives to keep away from the things that lead to this serious sickness, by lowering his gaze and not looking at harem things, not listening to harem things, and averting the passing thoughts that the shaitan casts into his mind, then after that something of the evils of this sickness befalls him because of a passing glance or a transaction that is basically permissible, and his heart becomes attached to a woman. There is no sin on him for that inshallah, because Allah says, interpretation of the meaning. Allah burdens not a person beyond his scope, Al-Baqarah 2 286. Allah only burdens a person with actions that he is able to do. Allah's religion is based on ease and not difficulty. If any person does good, he will receive the reward for it in full. If any person does evil, he will receive the punishment for the sin he committed and no one will carry it for him. The messenger and the believers said, O Lord, do not punish us if we forget or make a mistake in doing something or saying something unintentionally. O Lord, do not burden us with that which is difficult for us and which we are unable to do as you had tasked those before us who were punished for their wrongs. Do not give us such instructions and prohibitions which are difficult for us and which we are unable to fulfill. By your grace, overlook our sins, forgive us and have mercy on us. You are our guardian and helper, so give us victory over the disbelievers. Al-Baqarah, 286 Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Majmu al-Fatawa, 1110. If that does not result from carelessness or transgression on his part, then there is no sin on him for what befalls him. End quote. Ibn al Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Radat al Muhibin, 147. If love occurs for a reason that is not harem, the person is not to be blamed, such as one who loved his wife or slave woman, then he separated from her but the love remained and did not leave him. He is not to be blamed for that. Similarly, if there was a sudden glance, then he averted his gaze, but love took hold of his heart without him meaning it to, he must, however, ward it off and resist it. End quote. But he must treat his heart by putting a stop to the effects of this love, and by filling his heart with love of Allah and seeking his help in that. He should not feel too shy to consult intelligent and trustworthy people for advice or consult some doctors and psychologists, because he may find some remedy with them. In doing that he must be patient, seek reward, remain chaste and keep quiet, and Allah will decree reward for him inshallah. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said in, Majmu al-Fatawa, 10133. If he is tested with love but he remains chaste and is patient, then he will be rewarded for fearing Allah. It is known from Shari evidence that if a person remains chaste and avoids harem things in looking, word and deeds, and he keeps quiet about it and does not speak of it. So that there will be harem talk about that, whether by complaining to another person or committing evil openly, or pursuing the beloved one in any way. 
And he is patient in obeying Allah and avoiding sin, despite the pain of love that he feels in his heart, just as one who is afflicted with a calamity bears the pain of it with patience. Then he will be one of those who fear Allah and are patient, verily, he who fears Allah with obedience to him, by abstaining from sins and evil deeds, and by performing righteous good deeds. And is patient, then surely, Allah makes not the reward of the Muzanun, good doers, to be lost, Yusuf 12 hours 90 minutes. They were amazed, and asked whether he was in fact Joseph. Joseph said to them that he was indeed Joseph, and that the person with him was his full brother. Allah had favored them, saving them from their previous situation, raising them in rank. Whoever is mindful, following what he instructs and staying away from what he has prohibited, and being patient with hardship, their actions are good. And Allah does not allow the reward of those who do good to be lost, rather, he keeps it in store for them. Yusuf, 90. End quote. And Allah knows best. Ruling on Celebrating Valentine's Day Celebrating Valentine's Day Celebrating Valentine's Day Eid ul-Hub or Holiday of Love, Permanent Committee Ibn Taymiyyah on the Prohibition of Participating in the Festivals of the Unbelievers Islamic View on Celebrating the Valentine's Day Valentine Day in Islam